I think that out of all the seasons available for landscape photography, so winter, spring, summer, and fall, that winter is by far the most difficult season from a post-processing perspective. And my own personal struggles or, or difficulties stem from a, a multitude of various different issues that have plagued my editing workflow for years when it comes to creating those frosty winter photos. And in this video, I wanna share with you what those issues are, but perhaps most importantly, how you can easily resolve them in a much quicker manner than I did. So I organized this video into a, a real simple workflow that consists of five easy steps that when completed in this very specific order, results in the complete, I guess, resolution of some of the biggest and most common photo editing mistakes that I encountered with my own winter landscape photos. So to jump right into it, the very first issue or, or mistake, or I should say step in this workflow, is to correct your white balance, which is probably one of the, the biggest issues when it comes to photographing snow, is correcting your white balance. And there's multiple different ways to do it in Lightroom, but there's one trick that absolutely blew my mind as I, I never even knew it was a feature inside of Lightroom, but it has completely changed how I adjust the white balance for my own winter scenes. So this is the, the image we'll be working on right here. And as you can tell, the, the white balance is, is pretty off on this image. It's, it's very cool. All the white areas or areas that should be white have a very blue tint to it. And it's mainly because snow is a very reflective surface and it's going to reflect whatever is above it, which in outdoor landscape photography, nine times out of 10, that's going to be the sky. So if you're photographing snow on a crystal clear blue sky, you guessed it, your snow is going to have a very blue tint to it. If you're photographing snow, <clears throat> excuse me, on a, let's say an overcast day, a lot of times your snow will look maybe a little bit gray or maybe a little overly warm or yellow a little bit. So whatever the sky is on a particular day, it's going to resemble that in the, uh, in the snow itself. So in this particular situation, all of the, uh, the tint is, or, or I should say all of the snow is tinted blue. So I could come up here to the basic panel. As you can see, the white balance is as shot. I'm gonna change this to auto just to see what it does. And uh, that did a pretty good job. It definitely warmed it up a little bit. It has the, uh, the temperature at 7,500. I could take the eyedropper and try and find a somewhat neutral area, maybe somewhere right around here. And that has resulted in Lightroom uh, actually increasing the, the overall temperature quite a bit now to around 8,400. But here's the real game changer. Here's the real, um, I guess, secret in my personal opinion that will really help you dial in white balance when it comes to uh, winter photos. So if you come over here to the border area right here and you right click it, you can actually change the background color here to any of these colors right through here. If you change it to white, that's gonna give you a perfectly white background all around your photograph, but most importantly, it's gonna give you that reference point of what pure white actually is. And that's a game changer when it comes to picking the um, an accurate white balance for your snow. So now I can actually see what pure white is and I can see exactly what the snow is right through here. So I'm gonna dial back the warmth just a little bit, maybe not around 8,500, but maybe somewhere right around 7,600 looks good. And I'm gonna leave the tint exactly where it is for right now. Now, the second issue with um, with winter photography is a, it has to do with your exposure and your white point. And the reason these are real big issues is because if you rely on your light meter in your camera to determine exactly what is a reasonable exposure for your winter scene, your camera is will almost always think that the snow is brighter than it actually is. Snow wreaks havoc on a camera's um, uh, light meter or, or histogram. So if you, I guess if you're using your light meter on your camera, and you stop the light meter on zero, which is basically your camera saying that, yes, this is a perfectly exposed image. You're good to go, take your exposure. If you rely on that, every time when you get back home and you put your, your image in post, more than likely you're gonna find that your image is anywhere from one to maybe two stops underexposed. So a good best practice when you're on location is to always overexpose your winter scenes a little bit, maybe one or two stops. Pay attention to your histogram, make sure you're not blowing out any areas of your highlights or anything like that but always kind of just keep that in the back of your mind that your camera's light meter is going to think that that snow is brighter than it actually is. You might want to just overexpose in the field a little bit more than what your light meter and your, and your histogram are indicating. But in this particular situation right here, I did rely on my light meter. And as you can see that it uh, is a little bit underexposed. So what I like to do is hit the shortcut key J, which is basically going to turn on the clipping indicators. And if I take the exposure and I turn this all the way up, you'll notice that Everything in red is Lightroom indicating that these are areas of overexposed highlights. So I like to leave that on just so I can know exactly how far I can push the exposure. 
And I think I'm just gonna leave it somewhere right around here. And I'm gonna leave the clipping indicator on, and if I take the white slider and I turn that all the way up, once again, you can see everything that is indicated in red is overexposed areas. So I'm gonna bring this down a little bit till all of that red area is resolved and kind of bring it back just a little bit right there. And if I hit the backslash key and just see where we started, this is where we began and this is where we're at right now. So this is before and after, and that is already a huge difference right there in just those two steps. But those are two of the biggest issues with winter photography, fixing that white balance and fixing your exposure and your white point. Now the third step is adjusting your contrast because we, we added a lot of uh, exposure or we increased exposure quite a bit on this image. We increased the white point, we changed the, the actual white balance of the overall photograph and we, we sucked a lot of contrast out of this photograph. So now we wanna add that back in. And what I like to do is I'll come down to the tone curve. I'm gonna take the kind of the darker mid-tones. I'm gonna bring them down a little bit. I'm gonna come over here to the highlight, uh, or I should say the brighter mid-tones. Kind of bring that up a little bit. Just kind of adding in that classic S curve. Maybe bring these, uh, the darker mid-tones down just a little bit more. Bring the brighter mid-tones up a touch. And let's toggle this on and off. So this is before and after, before, and after, I think I'm gonna bring these highlights down just a little bit more. And I think somewhere right around there looks good. Or you could actually come up here and just use the actual contrast slider if you wanna do that. And if you're not super comfortable using the tone curve, you can actually come over here and you can use Lightroom's kind of a, uh, they have a medium contrast setting or a strong contrast setting, which will automatically just add that type of a tone curve, whatever particular image you're looking for, if you're not comfortable kind of adding that tone curve in yourself. So the fourth step is we want to adjust our shadows and our black point because we added a lot more contrast back into this photo, but it looks like now, especially along the tree trunk area that we kind of lost some shadow detail through there. So I'm gonna come up here to the shadow area. I'm gonna increase this a little bit because I wanna bring back some of that detail through there. I think that looks good. And then the black point. So if I bring the black point all the way down, and remember I had the clipping indicator still on, you'll notice that everything that is highlighted in blue is Lightroom basically saying that this area in blue is just pure black. There's no detail in there whatsoever. So I definitely wanna bring that up until all that blue area is resolved. So somewhere right through there I think looks good. And if you wanna kinda of soften the image down a little bit for winter photos, you can actually bring the black point up a little bit. You'll notice that that softens it as well. So I think I'm just gonna bring the black point down just a touch to about right there. And I'm also gonna bring these highlights down just a little bit as well. So this is where we started. This is where we're at right now. So this is before and this is after. A huge transformation in this overall photograph. And then the fifth and final step is just something that I call filters. And I find that this is usually the last step in almost every one of my images is to apply local filters to certain areas of your scene. And for this photograph, what I wanna do is I'm gonna grab a graduated filter. And I'm just gonna kinda of drag this up right through here. And if I hit the shortcut key O, we can see exactly the area that we are impacting. And I'm gonna come up here to the brush tool and I'm gonna select erase right here. I'm gonna leave the flow at 100 and I'm gonna leave the feather at, I'm sorry, I'm gonna leave the flow at 50 and the feather at 100. And I just wanna paint, paint away just a little bit of the center area right through here. And then I'm gonna hit the shortcut key O to turn that off. And then I'm gonna bring my exposure down just a little bit. And you can see what that's really doing to a lot of the, the um, I guess the, the grass sticking through the snow before you really couldn't see it. But if I bring the exposure down a little bit now, you can start to see that come through. Plus I think it adds a little bit of depth to the overall photograph when the foreground is a, a little bit darker and it kind of leads into a brighter area. I feel that that creates a little bit more of a three dimensional look in the overall image. So I'm gonna bring the overall exposure of the foreground down just a touch, but you may notice that this area right through here on the left and right corners, is starting to, to kind of take on a little bit of a blue tint. So I'm gonna come up here to my temperature and just warm that up just a little bit because I don't want my snow to look blue. And I think that looks good. And let's just toggle this on and off to see what we've done. So this is before and after, before and after. And you can see how we got a lot more detail in that foreground area. We can also bring up the, the texture or maybe the clarity a little bit as well, just to bring out a little bit of that detail through there. I'm gonna come up here to new because I wanna create another graduated filter across the top area right through here. 
I'll hit the shortcut key O again just so you can see the area that I'm going to be impacting. And I want to just maybe bring down the exposure a little bit to see what that does. I don't like that. It will bring the highlights down a little bit. I'm ultimately looking to see if there's any blue in the sky. Let me try the dehaze. Bring up dehaze a little bit. And yes, you can start to see a little bit of that blue coming through in these corners up through here. When I was on location, it was a crystal blue sky, which is, um, you could see in the fact that the snow was also blue as well. But when I captured the image, you really couldn't see that as well. So I knew the, that there was a little bit of blue in the sky. I want to kind of bring that in a little bit just to create a little bit of additional interest in the background to draw the viewer's eye throughout the entire photograph. Because if this if the sky is just completely white and the majority of this image is white, it just kind of results in a little bit of a bland background. So I'm going to bring the, the dehaze up a little bit right through there. And I think that looks good. But you'll notice that the tree is starting to be, is, is impacted by this dehaze as well. And I don't want that. So I'm going to come down to range mask. I'll select a luminance range mask. I'm going to hold down the option key and just drag this range slider over until the tree turns dark gray or black. So basically everything that is in white is going to receive the edit and everything that is in black and gray is not going to receive the edit. So I think something right there looks good. And if I toggle this on and off, this is before and after. I'm going to bring the dehaze up just a little bit more just so you can it's a little bit easier to see at home. So maybe about there. Toggle this on and off. So before and after, before and after. And that made a huge difference right there. I'm going to kind of bring the highlights down just a little bit more as well. Maybe add a little bit of contrast here. So this is where we started. And this is where we're at right now. This is before and this is after. Maybe the highlights are down just a little bit too much, but you're able to see exactly how we were able to change it from this image right here, where the white balance is completely off, the exposure is off, the overall image just does not accurately resemble what it looked like while you're on location. And this is the way we turned it into here. So before and after. So those are some of the, the biggest issues when it comes to entering or entering, editing outdoor winter landscape photos. Exposure issues, white balance issues, contrast, white point, black point. Those are all major issues when it comes to editing snow photos. So I do hope some of the information in this video you can apply to some of your um, your winter landscape photos this season. I know that um, here in North Carolina, we have a couple of potential snowstorms coming up here towards the end of this week that I'm super excited about. I always get a little bit giddy. I'm kind of a weather nerd. So when there's a potential chance that there is some snow. I start hopping into a lot of these weather forums and check out weather models to uh, try and figure out where the greatest opportunity is for the most snowfall. And I usually will try and drive there. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. So I hope you're able to get at least one nugget of helpful information out of this video that you can apply to your snow photos this season. As always, if you have any questions, please leave those in the comment section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you did enjoy this week's video, if you could give it that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already and ring the, the little bell notification as well, just that way you are notified the next time I do upload. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.